Coaches, today on Air Raid Nation, we're going to play another childhood game. That's right, we're going to play show and tell, as in how much do you show in your preseason scrimmage, and what does that tell you about where you are as a team? Stay tuned. Coaches, welcome back to 92 Mesh Group and Air Raid Nation. This is Coach Coltharp coming to you again from North Carolina. And today I'm really excited because guess what time it is? It's preseason scrimmage time. And if you've been on YouTube and on Twitter, you've seen a bunch of coaches doing videos and, and, and tweets about preseason and how things are going. And, and so I just thought that, you know, that would be a great time for me to kind of give you my ideas on what I think about the preseason. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to ask you a question, man, because I really, really want to know that. So if you can hang out to the end and, and answer that question for me, I'd really appreciate it, man. But if you're really enjoying the channel and all the videos that we're putting out on, on, on the air raid and spread offense and and coaching development, man. I'd really appreciate it if you drop a like. Last video got over 100 likes, man, and that's kind of my target goal. I know if I get 100 likes, it's time to make another video. So we got 100 likes, so it's time to make another video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, which about half of you guys haven't, I'd really appreciate it, man. The channel and the nation are growing. And all that being said, man, I really, really appreciate you. Now let's jump in the video. All right, guys, so let's talk about preseason scrimmage planning and what I think are some of the keys for that. Um, we're back over in our little presentation uh, presentation style video for this one, man. So I just wanted to kind of give you some ideas to think about. And remember to hang out towards the end of the video because I got a question I want you guys to help me out with. So check that out later on in the video. This one's not going to be long as usual. But I think just like anything else, you got to have goals. And, and, and so what are your goals for your preseason scrimmage? And in my mind, there's like three goals. Um, the first one, obviously, is sharpness. Um, um, you know, defense is usually ahead of offense. And if you don't agree with that, let me know why down in the comments. But, you know, you're trying to get sharp. So, you know, sharpness comes with reps. And, and one of the best ways to ensure that you can stay sharp is to script. If you're not scripting, um, your scrimmages, I promise you, you're not going to get the most out of them. You're going to get back on the bus or go back into the field house after the scrimmage. And you're going to say to yourself, I meant to run this. I meant to run that because we get so competitive that, you know, you almost come out of your game and you're just like, well, you know, uh, I wanted to win or we weren't looking good. So I went back to this, this, and this, and this, but that's not going to allow you to be sharp. And the great thing about being in an air raid offense is that your offense is so compact. Um, just like we talked about in our tic-tac-toe video. And if you haven't seen that one, there'll be a link in the description at the end of the video. But, you know, we talked about using that grid board to be able to attack each part of the field and having a play that designs that. But if you have too many plays, you know, it's time to take stuff out. So, you know, being sharp in a scrimmage and running a, a condensed spread air raid offense really allows you to be sharp because you can practice those plays over and over and over. You know, right now, me and Coach Salas, we're running three runs, um, probably about three screens and, um, you know, two quicks and four dropbacks if I had to if I had to guess right off the top of my head you know our offense is pretty small and you know for us it's day three insertion so you know we're doing you know you know outside zone or whatever it is today I think it was outside zone and and you know we're running nine we're running uh shallow and and, and we're running uh slant or I think that was our three for the day and then we had one of our screens in so you know we, we just do those we just repeat insertion every day through camp and so now when we get to the scrimmage you know we have a competition period every day um and and what we did in team is is you know during our team offense period and before our competition period you know we just basically ran our first five plays um, from the scrimmage and just kept kept repeating the script over and over and over and over and over. And I think that's a great idea. Um, the second goal of your scrimmage really should be to develop some depth, especially those of you guys who are at small schools. Um, you know, we two platoon at a 1A school, and that's tough. If you want to have any questions about that, man, down in the comments, you know, let me know. Maybe we'll do a video on how we do that. Um, maybe me and Coach Salas can do a video together and just kind of explain our philosophy of two platooning at a small school and why it's really important. But we also cross train for 10 minutes every day as well, you know, just to get guys in there who, who need to be in the depth. And one of the things that you have to talk, um, think about in a scrimmage, and we'll talk about this at, at the end of the video, like towards the last part of it, um, is, you know, what is your actual goal for this for this scrimmage and, and developing depth has to be one. So, you know, don't be afraid to put that freshman in there, you know, with with four seniors or, um, 
or or put a you know the backup the backup in with a, with a group of starters and also it's fair when you're trying to develop competition and really decide who gets the job you know don't don't get one kid who's the number one but there's a guy who's pushing him don't let that number one kid play with the ones and then the guy who's pushing him have to play with the twos the whole time throw, throw take that guy who's pushing that number one let him play with the number ones and see if he's a real number one or if he's just that much better than all the number twos and I think developing depth is important and I'd love to hear you guys' ideas about that down in the comment and then I think the last goal of, of your preseason scrimmage will be test your new schemes man I know I know all of us spent the off season you know whether watching courses on coach tube or watching YouTube videos and things like that um you know learning new things and and, and everything looks good against yourself you know especially if you're um, you're an average team, you know, you're going to look better than you really are. And then when you go against guys who maybe are a little bit better than you, you're, you're going to find out, you know, the ifs and ands and pots and pans. And, and so, you know, testing your new schemes out, figuring out if, if that defensive coverage that you've been working on all spring is really going to work. Um, if that blitz that you've been putting in or that front that you're working on and it's look good in practice, is it really that thing? Don't be afraid to test those new schemes. And so that brings me to what the dilemma for preseason scrimmage planning really is, and 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 it, and it really affects all three of these things. And this is kind of really want to talk to you, man. Is is it is a preseason scrimmage? Is it more important to look good or get good? Okay, nobody wants to look bad in a scrimmage. I mean, nobody does. You you know your fans are getting to see you for the first time. A lot of you guys are selling tickets um, to, th to things like that. Um, you know, now here in North Carolina, we can't scrimmage in the spring. Of course, we had a whole season in the spring, but we can't have a, a scrimmage game like in Texas and things like that. So our very first scrimmages, you know, is usually nine or 10 days into camp. And, and so this is really the first opportunity for people to see what kind of team we're going to put on the field that year. And so, you know, obviously you want to come out the, the box and look good. Um, but, you know, for us, we, there's a part of our offense that we know is a million bucks. And if we really, really, really wanted to look good, we would just come out there and do those one or two things the entire time and, and look as good as we possibly could do. But then the problem with that is, is what happens when we go against that team whose scheme – um, kind of counteracts that, and we have to we have to lean on other parts of our offense, and, and so that's where you have to challenge yourself to really script things that you need to work on. You know, I would script it. You know, in my first five plays, I would script two runs, a screen, an RPO, and a drop back. Um, you know, and if maybe or maybe one run, a screen, an RPO, and two drop backs, depending on what your pass you know percentages or whatever it is but you know that that would be kind of my breakdown you know in your first five plays what would your breakdown be um we don't really script we don't really script more than five plays we like to go five and then go five the same five over you know out of various different formations we might run larry out of this formation but then run it out of another formation for instance so you know how those things work um you know that's just between you and your staff but but really looking good versus getting good and, and that's the dilemma to me i think um also um when you're developing that depth are you going to look as good when you have two or three guys that are, aren't on the field during that segment because you got other guys in and you're trying to get them on film in real life situations? So that's another part of am I really more important? Is it more important for me to look good versus getting good? You know, and then if there's a, you know, a certain, you know, certain blitz that, you know, is would kill this team that we're playing and you run it one time and you stone it. Do you just keep running that blitz over and over and over, you know, spamming that that NCAA blitz, or do you really want to work on your bare front or your under front, your over front, um, and, and the things that you've been working on in camp to test to see if guys can perform? Um, so, you know, it really boils down to do you really want to win that scrimmage or do you want to look good in that scrimmage, you know, or looking good in that scrimmage or winning that scrimmage versus getting good, developing depth, becoming sharp, and testing those new schemes. And and so I guess that's my that's my question to you guys, you know, at here as we get towards the end of the video, man. Do you show or not show? OK, and this is a big, big, you know, question in the football coaching community, man. Do you go to a scrimmage and you just come out there and you put everything out there and you do the things that you do and you just try to look as good as you can? You know, you might run, um, you know, all, you know, three or four different formations or or and maybe throw a reverse pass in there and and do some different things. Or do you come in and you're like the most vanilla taste in ice cream ever? You just, you know, really, really basic. And there's two schools of thoughts on that. You know, you come out and show all of that stuff. I promise you the the week one defensive coordinator is going to be like, oh, my God, I got to get ready for this, 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 while they're still trying to polish up their base offense. Or do you come in there vanilla and and then try to get maybe one or two plays 
um, out of your trick formation or whatever and, and do that. So just kind of interesting to see what you guys think about that in the comments down below, man. Let me know what you think, man. Show or don't show. I think that would be an interesting, um, you know, an interesting, you know, conversation to have maybe over on Facebook or on Twitter, man. And as always, I really appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. If you haven't liked or the video, please do. We could, we'll do another one when we get to 100 likes, man. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, spin it to win.